It's a double header on Saturday, the 10th of February 2024. We are racing out at Turfentine and we've got a race meeting out at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth as well. Eight races on the program down in the Western Cape and race number one commences at 12.55. So it is a late start with um, obviously uh, the sun is setting quite late down in the Western Cape. They are very privileged and uh, joining me is Graham Hawkins. And uh, Graham, how are you doing and uh, how's everything going your side? Thank you, Rahil. The weather continues to be great. We set for a wonderful weekend's racing. We've got racing on Saturday at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth, and then, of course, an added meeting on Monday the 12th. So we've got a, two meetings over the next couple of days at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth, but the first order of business is obviously the Saturday race meeting. Let's get into race number one, which is a maiden juvenile plate set to be run over the 1100 meter trip and uh, the start of the bar part as well. Having a look at race number one, your favorite is World of Pleasure, trading at 18 to 10 in the market, 9 to 2 about Impact Investor. Xantha, 6 to 1 into 5 to 1. It is 6 to 1, Water Fortune, and then it's 10 to 1 and Better Bar. Those now, World of Pleasure produced a pleasing run on debut, second behind um, this individual, Banff, and uh, reported showed. I'll try and late on in the day and uh, obviously Vaughan Marshall doing extremely well with his juveniles and especially the one wills who have uh, hit the ground running. Absolutely and one stripe was so impressive in the week winning by six lengths and he has one that fits the same sort of bill. I'm not suggesting he's as good as one stripe but he's out of a very fast family, Royal Pleasure. She won her first three races as a juvenile and we've also seen the benefit of having one run under the belt. I know there's money coming for number nine, Zanzar from the Michael Azzi stable and Richard Faree's a significant jockey booking there. But World of Pleasure showed enough on debut uh, to be the one to beat. He's got two lengths to spare over number three, Impact Investor, who was fourth in the same race behind Eric Sands' runner, Banff. Obviously, number 10, What a Fortune from the Candace Bass Robinson stable also has a nice pedigree, but has drifted out from nine to two to six to one. We have another tricky day's racing, Rahil. So I'm taking my chances in the first leg of the bipod. The bipod is my suggested bet. I'm going to banker number seven, World of Pleasure, and then I've got three horses in the remaining five legs. So World of Pleasure to get us off to a nice start. Yeah, all in here with horse number seven, and hopefully he can get the job done at start number two. Moving along to race number two on the program. This is a maiden plate set to be run over 1,400 meters. And race two will get the place accumulator underway. Half past one is the off time. Having a look at the fixed odds betting market, Go It Alone is the one that tops betting boards at two to one. 22 to 10 in the bag, six to one, salute the flag. It's in seven to one and better ball. Those number 10, give that man a bells is out. So it's a field of just nine runners that remain over 1400 meters. Now, Graham, Go It Alone, number seven from the Justin Snake Yard. He's obviously, uh, he showed good improvement last time out when running second and now, uh, having his second run after a layoff, he will no doubt strip a much fitter horse. But is he a, a good thing in this contest, or could you uh, could you see him getting beat? Because uh, this horse in the bag, we both liked him last time out and thought he could be some value. And I thought he ran a fair race. It was um, he wasn't disgraced. And now that it's not obviously a maiden handicap, there's, uh, the weights are all the same here. Could he possibly turn the form around with the, in the bag with the go it alone? Because there was very little to choose between them last time out. Well, there was only a short head between them, and he was giving go to learn a half a kilo. So, strictly on paper, they should just about dead heat. Uh, but that was number seven, go to learn's first run as a gelding. He showed terrific potential in his debut, went fourth behind Future Variety. We know what Future Variety's gone on to do. Then he lost his way in his next two starts, and they decided to geld go to learn, and that has uh, immediately brought about some improvement. He ran second behind Aspect. I don't think that was the strongest race. He had in the bag a short hit behind him in third, so there's nothing to choose between those two. Number 10, Give That Man a Bells, was originally my first choice, but as you mentioned, that just scratched. A couple of others worth a mention. I think number one, Salute the Flag for Candace Dawson, will improve jumping out of pole position. Uh, number two, at 12, Falant gets blinkers for the first time. Done enough in some of his runs to consider that he has a chance here. And watch out for a much better run from number eight, Gold Gunner. He hasn't raced since September. There was a inauspicious debut. He's been gilded since. He's out of the grade one winner. Spike.
overpriced gold, and uh, gold kind of should improve. But it all points to uh, go it alone to get the job done, despite the fact that he's only got a short head to spare over in the bag. Given that was his first run as a gelding, I think he might continue to improve. Uh, certainly, you should be more to come from horse number seven, a son of giving the green light. JP Funamova aboard for Justin Snaith. Race number three on the program, the start of the pick six, 1400 meters, the trip five past two, the off time, maiden plate for Phillies and Mares. And uh, having a look at uh, this contest, the market uh, has got Kawakazi at the top, 22 to 10. Hampstead Heat is at 4 to 1. It's 9 to 2. Fastnet Philly, 9 to 2. Plum put in 8 to 1. And better bar those. Now, Kawakazi, she's been uh, costly to follow. She's been uh, disappointing. And um, let's see if she uh, can return after a break and get the job done. But this uh, filly from uh, the Adam Marcus Yard, Hampstead Heat. Last time out, she ran behind uh, Kailami Girl. I thought her two runs to date have been fair. And she just gives me the... She, she just seems like a filly that is waiting to go around the turn. And I think that uh, they're going around uh, the turn at the right time with her now that she's had uh, two come on runs. Yeah, she gives the impression that the further she goes, the better will, she will be. And her first two runs have been pretty decent. I don't think this is a very deep field. It's right for the taking. Uh, there are four fillies in the race that I think are worth a mention. Kawakazi, as you say, has been a bit costly to follow. Was definitely below form last time out. Uh, way below the form shown in her first three starts. Uh, the Harold Crawford, Michelle Rick stable has uh, have been absent from the winners' enclosure for quite a long time now. Uh, Kawakazi will hopefully get them back on the uh, winning track, and I do like Calamaretta from the same stable a little bit later on. Fastnet Philly, drawn in pole position. Note the support for her last time out. She was backed in from seven to one to thirty-three to ten, but. Uh, disappointed and finished uh, behind a couple of others, including Kawakazi that she meets here. Plum Pudding was only ahead behind Hampstead Heath when they raced over 1,200 metres last time out uh, on the 20th of January. Uh, that was Plum Pudding's second run, as it was Hampstead Heath's second run. So there's every reason to believe that uh, being by Silvana out of a Jetmaster Mayor, Plum Pudding is also going to show significant improvement the further she goes. So I think this is not cut and dried. Hampstead Heath does get the vote for me ahead of number eight Kawakazi and number two Plum Pudding. Uh, but don't leave number one Fastnet fully out of the out of the calculations. Yeah, it's certainly yeah, she's a fully that comes from a banging form uh, combination of Brett Crawford, Loom Port, Loom Cotua, and. Uh this filly could certainly be up to the task at hand. But number seven, Hampstead Heath, the narrow top selection for Graham in race number three. Moving along to race number four, a maiden plate, and this will be a run over 1,800 metres. 14.40 is the off time. Fixed odds betting market, Mr. Belvedere, trading at 33 to 10. 9 to 2, quite a king. 6 to 1, 4, Jack. 6 to 1, Fly Futura. 30, 15 to 2, Lockheed Lightning, French Trip, Storm Boulevard. It's then 8 to 1, and better bar those. Now, Graham, this uh, race, Mr. Belvedere, he's obviously coming along the right way and he may have possibly run in a, in a race last time out where the form line could hold up over 1,600 metres and now that he's going over 1,800 metres, the, uh, the distance should suit him quite nicely. He jumps from a, a good draw and he shapes up as a horse that they all have to beat. But this was Apache Chief. Last time out, I was in his camp and everything didn't seem to go his way up the lane and he was um, I thought he was taken out at a crucial point in the race and that possibly cost him getting the job done it's a smaller field he comes in to draw six and with Cicle Chele taking the ride you're obviously going to get a good price and I think uh, 14 to 1 in the market that's going to be the value in the race for me but uh, obviously number three Mr. Belvedere the one to beat how do you see the fourth race unfolding? Let's start with Apache Chief. He's one of three runners from the Eric Sand stable. I think the stable elect is without question number nine, Storm Boulevard. Uh, go back and watch the rerun of his last race. He was all over the track. I think he is improving. He definitely has his limitation. Uh, for me, he is the value in the race. I'm going to make number nine, Storm Boulevard, uh, my top choice, knowing full well that obviously number three, Mr. Belvedere, is the one to beat. Uh, but Eric also saddles, as you mentioned, number six, Apache Chief, and number two, French Trip. French Trip is coming along the right way. I think this is quite a trappy little maiden plate. We can expect number three, Mr. Belvedere, to continue to improve. 
His pedigree suggests that the further he goes, the better he'll be. He's by ideal world out of a four to it mare. And as you say, that last form line could turn out to be quite a strong one. So certainly number three, Mr. Belvedere, is entitled to be favourite. Uh, Lockheed Lightning has been uh, in the maidens for a very, very long time. But he definitely has shown improvement recently. And on that form, could get into the fray. Not sure what to make about number five, quite a king, because he's beautifully bred. And his last run was not too bad, considering that two a penny came out to follow up during the course of the week. So that form has certainly been franked, with two a penny getting it right and going back to back. Continental Express gets blinkers for the first time, comes out of the same two a penny form line, and Fly Futura also out of the two a penny form line. Uh, I think better than that last run was second in its previous two starts. So I think this is quite a tricky race. If you want to nail your colours to the mast with number three, Mr. Belvedere, I wouldn't put you off that. Uh, the Vaughan Marshal Stable is flying. Richard Faree's flying. He's drawn in gate number three. So he'll have every chance to shed his maiden ticket here. And if you get a banker, Mr. Belvedere, in the fourth race, I wouldn't put you off that. But if you don't banker him, uh, then you've got to go pretty wide. And I think that number nine, Storm Boulevard, offers some each-way value. And your each-way choice is number six, Apache Chief. Yeah, race number four certainly shapes up as a, as a possible quartet race even because they're betting 33 to 10 the field and as you heard from Graham Storm Boulevard could be some value. I think Apache Chief could be some value as well. So the quartet dividend could pay a very, very healthy one here and uh, if you manage to get uh, the structure right, well then you could be in the pound seat after the fourth race has been run. Race number five over 2,200 metres, the KP stakes over quarter, at uh, quarter past uh, three. Race number five will be the start of jackpot two. Natcham is your 33 to 10 joint favorite with number three, Gimme More Time, and number eight, Marshall Field. Seven to two about Royal Watch, seven to one, and better bar those. Another race that uh, is quite competitive. You've got horses that uh, are knocking on the door. Th three horses that have run second at their last start, then you've got a win off uh, his last start in the form of Marshall Field. So what have you done in the bipod in this race, Graham? Yeah, I've gone three horses in all of the legs apart from the first, which I'm bankering, and I'm going with numbers one, two, and eight. Uh, Marshall Field is interesting, isn't he? He took a long time to win his maiden, and then suddenly on an upward curve, and we were just chatting about Mr. Belvedere being by ideal world out of a mare by four to it, wanting to go the extra ground. Well, Marshall Field has a ditto pedigree by ideal world out of a four to it mare, and he's certainly come to light. And he's only got 52 on his back. He does carry a kilo over for the services of J.P. Van der Merwe. Going 2,200 meters now. He'll love the extra ground. Is he good enough? Well, only the race will show. Royal Watch and Natchiam. Of those two, I slightly prefer Royal Watch, but Natchiam has been marvellous. He's been absolutely consistent since his debut. He ran seventh over 1,400 metres on debut. And since then, in six starts, he's never been out of the first two. He does have 60 kilograms to shoulder. He's giving eight kilograms to Marshall Field and a kilo and a half to Royal Watch. Royal Watch has his third run after a rest and should strip very fit. Obviously, if you like Marshall Field, then you've got to give number three, give me more time, a mention. He ran second to Marshall Field last time. Uh, but his overall form suggests that uh, perhaps he'll be held again by Marshall Field. Those are the four runners that I'm focusing on in terms of the jackpots and the pick sixes, the top three, one, two, and eight in the buy pot. If you're looking for a real upset, then number seven, Ignatius, piques my interest. He's well-bred. He's carrying 52 and a half, but... Uh, if you go back three runs, he ran third behind Natchim, receiving just three kilograms. Now he receives uh, seven and a half. Ignatius is anything but consistent, but if he decides to be in a galloping mood of that weight of 52 and a half, uh, getting a lot of weight from Natchim and only got a length to find, he could be the source of the upset. But I'm going with Royal Watch to beat home Natchim and Marshall Field. But if Marshall Field was to continue in his winning ways, I wouldn't at all be surprised. Yeah, Marshall Field only gone up four points for his last victory. But Ignatius at 20 to 1 in the market could certainly be the upset potential that uh, you're looking for in the fifth race. Race number six, this is a class four contest for fillies and mares. And 15.50 is the off time. Favorite in this contest is Go Like Flow at 5 to 2, 7 to 2 about uh, 
Kamikaze at 6 to 1, G- Glee Club 6 to 1, Wugug, Red Moon Rising, and then it's 10 to 1 and better bar those. Now, number six, uh, Go Like Flow. She looked to be a filly that uh, was possibly just struggling, struggling to get it right, but she's turned the corner and she's won, surprisingly, at big odds at her last three starts. So she's on the up. She's gone from a 64 up to a 78, six points for her last victory. Form line isn't particularly the strongest, but um, there has been uh, some uh, runners to uh, come out and, and run decent races. She's returning off, uh, off a two-month layoff, but she's a filly that is certainly in good heart, and she's the one that's uh, booming with confidence at the moment. And Rahil, when you look at the last three wins, they've been very, very commendable. When you consider that she won over 12.50, drawn 12 out of 12 at Hollywood Mets Durbanville. Then she was drawn 10 out of 14 over 1,400 metres again at Hollywood Bets, Durbanville, and she followed up. I'm going to come back to that form line because she beat Kamikaze on that occasion. And then obviously last time out, again, as you mentioned, at the big price, again drawn absolutely in the bush, 14 out of 15, still gets the job done comfortably, even more comfortably than ever before when beating Senora Victoria over 1,400 metres. So go like flow. Uh, she's certainly in the form of her life. Now, she comes up against Kamikaze in her penultimate start. She beat Kamikaze by half a length. Kamikaze is now two and a half kilograms better off. That brings Kamikaze into the race with a big chance. Go like Flo is drawing gate six. Kamikaze drawing gate nine. It's not a massively big field, uh, but nonetheless, on that occasion, Kamikaze... Uh, was drawn uh, seven when uh, Go Like Flow was drawn right on the outside. So the draw favours Go Like Flow, but the weight turnaround favours number nine Kamikaze. And I'm going to go with number nine Kamikaze as my first choice ahead of number six Go Like Flow. Uh, but then, of course, you've got to consider number 10 Red Moon Rising because if you like Kamikaze, who was third behind school policy last time out, narrowly behind Kamikaze was number 10 Red Moon Rising. These are the only three for me that make any kind of appeal. So my focus is on numbers 6, 9 and 10. I give the, the vote to number 9 Kamikaze. I suppose number 8 Wagoog can continue to improve given the current form of the Brett Crawford stable. Uh, she won her maiden last time out beating another Andre Nell inmate in ice rain, so you'll have a fair idea of the pecking order between go like flow and ice rain, but I suspect that Wagoog uh, would have to step up a little more on her form to be competitive against go like flow, Kamikaze and Red Moon Rising. The rest don't really add up to too much. Perhaps number seven, Glee Club, is one that you can add to that list uh, for trifectas, quartets and exactors. Number nine, Kamikaze at around seven to two in the market. She's uh, been beaten by go like flow in uh, in two starts and uh, let's see if she can turn the form around come race number six race number seven at kp stakes over 1200 meters 25 past uh, four is the off time teflon man is your favorite at 33 to 10 5 to 1 dumbledore 7 to 1 gimme lightning major apollo at 8 to 1 along with tenango night tiger all about al it's then 12 to 1 and better bar those now this is a very very competitive event this horse uh, from the Dean Kaname yard, Teflon man, he's uh, he's obviously an individual that's got a lot of ability. And going over 1,200 meters now will suit him down to the ground. He's got 60 kgs on the back, but um, he's, a, he's a horse that I think could be up to the task at hand, Graham. And despite um, being lightly raced and only having seven starts, I think there's, there's still more to come from him. And he's a horse that um, Dean Kaname has seemed to place in selective races. He hasn't just uh, run him for the sake of running him, given he's only had seven starts to date. Yes, he's quite likely raced. He's a very good-looking Karari colt. He's, of course, a great son of Karari. And uh, his form speaks volumes. He ran a very good fourth behind Yellow Porsche Road last time out. And he's definitely one of the leading lights in this race, number 12, Teflon Man. These 1,200-meter races at Hollywood Bits Kenilworth can be quite competitive. You can't fault the consistency of number 10, All About Al. The Adam Marcus stable continues to show very good form. I think that All About Al sets the standard in this race. I think whatever beats number 10, All About Al, will win the race. 
He receives four and a half kilograms from Teflon Man, all about how his racing fit is in good form. Uh, whereas Teflon Man, as you say, races infrequently. I'm not sure if there are any problems that he's uh, had in training that uh, keeps him off the racetrack consistently. But clearly, number t 12, Teflon Man's got the quality. Two others to mention. I think they're more with chances, but we can't mention them all. I think that number four, Tanango, is probably better than his last run when judged on his previous run behind Future Variety. Then number four, Tanango, uh, must come into the race with a bit of a chance. Raymond Danielson doesn't get too many chances for the Candace Bass Robinson stable, uh, but he's ridden a couple of winners for them already. And then Dumbledore. Uh, narrowly beaten by uh, the very useful dance variety last time out, but Dumbledore uh, is about as consistent on the racetrack as I am on the golf course, um, uh -huh. and you never know quite what to expect from Dumbledore. One other that could upset them all is number nine, Night Tiger. Again, not too consistent, but if caught in the right sort of mood, uh, his best form is over this track and trip, number nine, Night Tiger. And again, Candace Bass Robinson had four winners. Just the other day, her stable is in a good space, and Night Tiger could uh, come home at big odds. But I think that number 10, All About L, sets the standard. The immediate danger, number 12, Teflon Man. Then numbers 4, Tenango, and 7, Dumbledore. As I said, there are others with chances, but we can't go through them all. Graham, just quickly, what's your thoughts on number 13, Bright Green? Because um, he hit the racetrack running, he won on debut, and he looked to be a horse that was going places, and he was well fancied... Uh, on Hollywood, on Hollywood Bets Durban July Day behind Cousin Casey and uh, he didn't really put his best foot forward there even though he was far from disgraced, only beaten two or two and a half lengths and he's dropped in the ratings quite a bit from a 104 down to an 86 and I see the blinkers go on. Could he show good improvement at around 25 to 1 in the market? Look, I think Dean Kahneman is pulling his hair out with number 13, Bright Green. We all expected a lot more after that very impressive debut. And then he followed that up with a good fifth behind Cousin Casey, beaten only two lengths behind Cousin Casey, beaten only three lengths by Silvano's Dasher, beaten only three lengths by Gladiatorian. Those have all gone on to, to huge heights. So Bright Green has dropped off the world. Uh, but he has been gelded. He was gelded before his last run, but he showed absolutely nothing. He was last throughout and finish last. Now Dean Canemay is putting the blinkers on. I think he is just hoping because somewhere there's ability, uh, but he's got to try and uncover it again. Yeah, race number seven, very, very competitive indeed. And uh, let's see how it uh, all unfolds on Saturday. Race number eight, the final race on the day. This is a KP stakes over 1,100 meters and uh, five o'clock is the off time for race number eight. You can scratch number three, Kathira, and it's a field of just eight runners that will remain for this event. And, Graham, you mentioned that uh, you like horse in this race. Calla Moretta, she's at 5-1 to one in the market. The favourite is La Divina at 3-1, to 7-2, Trip to Maputo, 4-1, to one, Dame of Tricks, Knockout at 4-1. to one. And then uh, your fancy, Calla Moretta. Tell us about uh, this filly. Well, it's interesting. Calla Moretta, of course, she won the debutante stakes during champion season straight out of the maiden. So she went back to back. And uh, she's never run out of a feature race until... Saturday until today. This is her first opportunity back in quote unquote ordinary company. Uh, she ran in the Diana Stakes, she ran in the Western Cape Phillies Championship, and she was not totally disgraced when running in the Grade 1 Cape Phillies Guineas behind Beach Bomb. Now she steps back to what I might call an ordinary race over 1100 meters down the straight. Uh, this is it for her. If she's got that element of class that she showed when winning the debutante stakes, then this race. Uh, is right for the taking for the daughter of Gimme the Green Light. Now, of course, we mentioned that the Harold Crawford, Michelle Rick stable haven't had a winner for a while. Liam Cotter takes the ride. I think the principal danger will be number eight, Pork to Vass, uh, for Richard Faree and Mike Stewart. Those are my top two choices. Number six, Calamaretta from number eight, Pork to Vass. But of course, Number one, Dame of Tricks won on debut, uh, beating Tequila Sky. Uh, Tequila Sky was beaten again the other day, but you could only win on debut, and it was uh, perhaps an unexpected win from the daughter of Versing Gatterich, winning on debut for the Brett Crawford stable. But it's interesting that Louis Cotwa uh, is riding Calamaretta. I know he can't make the weight on... Um, on, on, on Dame of Tricks, but you might have thought that they'd wait for another race for Dame of Tricks, but maybe she's in such a good space that they'd like to get her back to the race course quickly at Atendiwe and Goodwa uh, because he can make the weight rides a Dame of Tricks and she could be anything. La Divina, 
Well, I'm not sure. You know, she's got a chance, obviously. Wasn't disgraced behind great catch. She's got a chance in this sort of a class. But I wouldn't be rushing to back her. And Trip to Maputo has shown her best form over further. So, for me, this is now or never for number six, Calamaretta. I know she's got 61 and a half on her back. She's conceding nine kilograms to Dame of Tricks and uh, four and a half to Pork Tavas. I don't think I overlooked to Pork Tavas too lightly. Uh, I think she'll run a big race. But I'm going to give... Calamaretta, the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're quite right with Calamaretta. It's uh, it's now or never because when you look at the company that she she's been put up against, that's far stronger than what she does meet you. And uh, if she is to win a race, it could well be on Saturday in race number eight, despite 61 and a half on the back and five to one could be tremendous value above this daughter of Kim the green light. We're going to move along to the suggested bet now, and Graham will take us through his buy pot for a racing out at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth. And uh, buy pot begins with the running of race number one on the pro. 12.55, the off-time. Graham, take it away. Thank you, Rahil. I'm taking my chances in the first leg by bankering number seven, World of Pleasure. The Vaughan Marshall Stable in good form with the two-year-olds. The one Will's in good form. Ran second on debut and uh, should step up from that. So banker number seven, World of Pleasure in the first leg. The second leg, we're going to have to change slightly because obviously I... I uh, Send my selections through before the scratching of number 10. Give that man a bells. So I'm going to change uh, 1, 7 and 10 to 1, 6 and 7. 1, 6 and 7 in the second leg. Then numbers 2, 7 and 8. Plum Pudding, Hampstead, Heath and Kawakazi. Then numbers 3, 5 and 9. Mr. Belvedere, Quieter King and Storm Boulevard. Then numbers 1, 2 and 8. Royal Watch. Natyam and Marshall Field. The last leg, numbers 6, 9 and 10. Go Like Flow, Kamikaze and Red Moon Rising. And my value bet for the day, as we've just discussed, comes in the eighth race, number six, Calamaretta. Graham, thanks very much for your time. Obviously, looking, for, uh, looking forward to the meeting on Saturday. And it, uh, it looks to be a card where uh, the guys could make themselves a bit of cash. Well, let's hope. The horses run as we, as we have suggested they might do. Yeah, most definitely. Thanks very much to Graham Hawkins for his uh, time and his insight into racing on Saturday. And all the best, guys. Hopefully, it's a profitable day's racing.